to return to the front line. You're done here. Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Orvi Woe, back with another YouTube video for you today. Today we're going to be talking about paddled controllers, custom controllers that you can have made to use for Call of Duty, Fortnite, Warzone, Apex, anything you can think of. You've be they've become an enormous craze. You've probably seen them from different brands, and you may be wondering with Vanguard coming up or the holidays coming up, which one to get, who to trust, what to get on the controller. We're gonna do a, just a very short rundown of things to look for in your controller and, and how to just go about deciding why you would want one or, and what to look for in that. First, before we get into that, I would like to say, if you are new to the channel or returning and haven't subbed, I'd really appreciate a sub into the channel. Even more so, just leave some, maybe a comment in the comment section explaining what you think about the controllers or maybe what I can do to improve the channel. I'd really like to get this channel back growing at a rate that we used to uh, when we reached 5,000 subs before. I'd like to see that moving forward. So if I could, please, if you enjoy the video, please give that a shot. And if not, uh, that's all right. We'll try better next time. So in this video, what we are gonna do is talk about why you would want a custom controller, uh, custom paddled controller, and what to look for in those controllers. Let's tackle the why first. So the why you would want a custom paddled controller is, is very simple. They're better. They just are. They will instantly make you better at whatever game you are playing. As soon as you get comfortable with the paddles in your hand, they are light years ahead of what you can do with a regular controller. You can play, you can make similar inputs. Uh, there are ways that even you'll see some players play claw like this, where they have their hands up here like this and then shoot with their middle fingers. You can do that. Uh, it is very hard to learn and it is, I have heard harder on your hands as far as arthritis goes in the future. Probably not a lot of things that you're worried about at y'all's age now, but it can be done uh, or you can get a paddle controller and, and play the exact same way much more comfortably and easily with a lot less of a learning curve. Um, there are really no drawbacks to a good, well-made paddled controller. They will only help you to keep your thumbs on the controls while you're playing and still be able to do other controls with your back fingers, which on a normal controller are not doing anything. They're useless. We might as well fill that up, get our full use out of our fingers and, uh, and start taking advantage of what we can do with these paddled controllers. Now, when it comes to what to look for in a paddle controller, I have four things that I like to look for right off the bat. Uh, the four things being one, company integrity, two, build quality, three, the features that the controller is, has, uh, and four, the aesthetics. And we'll break down those a little more, uh, starting with company integrity. This one, uh, this one and build quality can kind of go hand in hand. You could put either one of them as, as most important. Uh, but with some of the problems that I've run into with custom controllers, uh, I like to put it at the top. Company integrity can mean uh, quite a few things. Mostly what I am talking about when I mention that is that we wanna make sure that we will have a company that will still be there six months from now when the controller breaks, because it will, and you will need some sort of warranty, maybe a return, things like that. Uh, there are new pop-up companies all the time with controllers and with anything, and uh, you just want to be careful when you're spending, you know, $200, $300 on a controller uh, that you're going to have someone still there when you need some help uh, with your controller later. Uh, of course, when you start looking at companies, there's Scuff, there's AIM, there's Cinch, uh, Battle Beaver. All of these are, are pretty well-known companies that are reputable and have been around for a while and are all pretty safe, but there's a lot of others that will pop up. And even with those larger companies, you're gonna find different people have had different experiences with these companies. Uh, as Just from my own experience, I've owned three scuff controllers and I had a very wide range of experiences with the company, depending on at what point uh, you're talking about from which controller I had. Uh, the very first paddle controller I ever had was a scuff back in the Xbox 360 days. Uh, and it was 
uh, an incredible controller. I used the, the crud out of it for multiple years, worked great, had to get a couple of things fixed on it a few times. And it was at the time, they were incredible to work with, very quick to work with, got things sent to me and, and I had to send the controller in at one point to fix something that was handled very quickly and swiftly. Um, since then, uh, they have been bought out. And uh, I would say that my experience with dealing with the company has been less favorable, but a lot of things have kind of gone into that as well. It was right around the time of the PS5 launching. A lot of new things were changing with Scuff internally, so that could have been part of that. Uh, but it's just some things you want to maybe check out and ask around, look at reviews, see what you know about the company. From uh, the other ones that I own personally, I have a I have a Scuff currently. I've had three. Uh, this is the only one I have currently. I have a Cinch Gaming PS5, and I have an AIM Controllers, which is what I currently use, an AIM Controllers PS5, uh, which, spoiler alert, does happen to be my favorite at the moment. Um, from the other companies, Cinch uh, was uh, very, also very good to work with. Um, got my controller. It did take a little longer than I had thought, but I think there had been uh, something happening uh, there had been like a flood or something in the moment w around when mine was supposed to be shipped and it just got hung up a little bit. They were incredibly nice to work with. Uh, again, through email, got my controller sent out very quickly once they realized what had happened. Really no issues with that. Uh, seems like a very solid company. Been around a long time. AIM, I know the least about the company, but again, same way, very quick on the shipment, especially considering I ordered that right when the PS5s were coming out. They were actually the first company I know of to send PS5 custom controllers. Uh, got mine very good, very quickly. Uh, I had a paddle brake on it uh, after about a, almost a year of use and um, very fast to send out new paddles under full warranty. Awesome, awesome to deal with. That's, uh, so that's the little bit of the companies that I know, but you just wanna do your research is the main thing. So number two is gonna be build quality. And it's a little tough to tell when you don't get to see the controller in your hands. Again, you kinda of have to go off of maybe other people's reviews and experience with the controllers. Maybe you do get lucky and get to get a, have a couple in your hands and try. Um, I, what you're looking for mostly is just durability. You're gonna get some stick drift. There's gonna be some things you just can't fix on a controller. They're, after years of use, they're gonna break down. That's where the company integrity comes in. Um, but things that can be prevented early are, are what you're gonna be looking for in build quality. Um, just some things to kind of give you an idea to look for on your triggers. You know, do they, are they normal triggers like would come on the regular controller? Are they extended and easily breakable? Um, does the controller look like it was built off of an actual PS5 or PS4 or whatever shell? Or is it some cheap thing that maybe they bought and kind of pieced together? Uh, or do you have replaceable sticks, things like that. Also, with a paddled controller, the paddles or buttons or whatever have you they, themselves, that's one thing you're gonna wanna look for and get that to, yeah. You can see how this one's broken. I have one broken there off of this scuff. Uh, that's gonna be the thing you're using the most. It's the thing you're buying the controller for. So you wanna see and kind of get an idea of how tough those are. Um, just to give you an idea on this, this is the, the Vantage from Scuff, which they did have quite a few problems with. But really, these paddles are pretty well built. They're pretty tough plastic. And uh, for, I would say, about a year, I had no issues. These were really the only two that I used, the outside ones. Um, but for some reason, after this one broke the first time, the next one that I got in to replace it broke pretty quickly afterwards as well. And I think it's just kind of my hand placement is pulling it to the side as opposed to pushing it down. But anyways, uh, these in the middle, which I didn't use really at all, are also really tough. They're built a little different. So I just switched, remapped, and made this middle one my left one, and then I haven't broken it since. But that being said, you want to look for things like that. Is the material made out of flimsy? Uh, does it look like a system that's going to be able to stay intact for a long time? That was one thing I was very worried about with my AIM controller, uh, their system, you can see I took the bottom ones off of this. It actually has four paddles. I took the bottom ones off just because I don't use them. They were a little in the way. Uh, they they didn't break, they're actually really good. But the, the system itself, I don't know if you can kind of get a look there, it's raised up off of the controller, there you go, like that. 
And I was a little worried about that, honestly, at first, because it felt like a, it felt like something that would break. And uh, I have since, just because I love how the controller feels so much, I've learned to kind of just soften up how I'm holding the controller a little because I want to extend the life. I did have one paddle break, uh, but that was after, literally, I just had it break. So probably almost a year of use, and it was really only this little lip of it. It was actually still functional. This little lip just kind of snapped off. And again, uh, they sent me new paddles uh, within a day or two for free. So uh, that's one of the great things about AIM. Their paddled components are fully warranted. Um, other than that, on the other side, I've had no issues and that feels pretty good. Um, on Cinch, if you can see this with it off, they actually have buttons. And if you like where these buttons are placed, and uh, one of the things I'll say about Battle Beaver, you can kind of adjust where the buttons go. On this cinch, if you like where these buttons are placed, I feel like this is the one that's gonna last the absolute longest. These, uh, there's, there's nothing sticking out. They're built into the controller really well. They kind of flush up. They have their own little kind of socket they're seated into. I don't really see any way for these to break other than just use uh, of over and over and over. Uh, so I would, this looks really good as far as build quality. It is the one I've had the least amount of time, but I feel like it's going to be the most durable. Uh, some other things you're going to want to look for is how your triggers work. Uh, they're All of them are going to be different. Most of them, if built off of a normal controller shell, will just have the regular trigger. Uh, one thing that is new now, I don't know if you can tell on these, this is from Cinch, these are the racer triggers or the smart triggers. And you can see on a normal trigger, get the zoom. See how far I have to pull that in for it to shoot? It doesn't shoot until that touches. On the cinch, that's the shot right there. And it's much, it's like a mouse click. Um, and so one of the neat features about that is that it shoots very quickly on your guns. But what I'm a little worried about on this cinch is just that there's some play after that click. So there's the click, and then I can still squeeze it down a little. On my aim that I do like a little better at the moment, when it clicks, it's there's a positive stop. I cannot squeeze that further. And so it, it feels very strong and very solid in my hands. Little things like that are just some things you wanna look for, uh, along with how well uh, all the casing and everything is kind of built together. You'll have all sorts of different ones depending on the controller you go with. The, uh, the scuff even has a plate that can pop off to be replaced. You wanna look at things like that and just see how well they are built. Number three is features. Uh, a few things, if you are getting a paddled controller now that I would absolutely, uh, after owning three, absolutely have to have on mine. One, the paddles themselves. Uh, if money is not an issue, then I would absolutely go with remappable paddles. Uh, those are some things you want. If not, and you only really play one game, you can, very easily get away with not having to go with remappable paddles. That just gives you the ability to change the inputs of which button does what. Um, but if, uh, if money is a little tight and you only really play one game and you know what buttons need to go on what paddle, then you can just get those mapped in with no remappable chip and save yourself usually 30 to 50 bucks right there. Uh, but you need to have those paddles, uh, if you don't care, then the remappable ability. The next thing is the smart triggers that I talked about, or the mouse click triggers, racer triggers, whatever each company calls them. Um, I'd have never had them before. I On Scuff, if you can see these little kind of tabs there, this, you can see is a full trigger pull, and then they used to have it where you would turn this over, and then now it's the short trigger pull. And that worked pretty good, but it's nowhere near as clean as these racer triggers. And I think all the new scuffs don't have this option. I think they all have mouse click triggers now too. Um, but anyways, that's something that has changed uh, my whole outlook on custom controllers. Um, it is so much quicker to shoot. You can really, really increase your speed on single fire guns, burst fire guns. You can even go on a fully auto gun when you're wanting to tap fire it, you can tap fire it much quicker. So it's just all around, it's, a, it's an incredible feature. You're absolutely going to want it. Uh, it is worth the extra money, I can guarantee that. Um, now one place where you can save, 
A couple of companies just put it in both the bumper and the trigger. Some companies give you the ability to change and only put it in the triggers or, or, or pick which ones you want to wear. What I can say is for the most part, in Call of Duty, I have not found much benefit to putting mouse triggers in the bumper. They already shoot pretty quick. That bumper is, uh, it's, I mean, it's almost mouse trigger anyways, mouse click anyways. So you can save yourself some money by keeping those original. But those are two features that I would definitely look for uh, in any controller that I, that I got for competitive uh, gaming. The last feature we're talking about is aesthetics, and it's this is really mostly just up to you, depending on how much you care about how your controller looks. Uh, to me, you can see as I went through these, I have a pretty clear aesthetic that I go for on all of these, which is black and red, or mostly just black. And the reason being on that, the first controller that I ever bought that was not a basic controller, I actually got it, uh, it was red, on the casing, I had clear triggers. You could see the light through all the way to the top. The whole trigger, or the whole thumbstick was clear. And uh, within a month, the thumbsticks had almost rotted out, <laughs> broken off. And then the red was just com the red here was just completely black. And it was it wasn't from dirt. I washed my hands f very often when I'm going to play, but it was from the actual just from the friction of my hands and the movement of when I was playing. I was actually rubbing the color off of the controller. That will also depend a little on what type of uh, top or, or casing you have on the controller. If it's just a solid plastic, it's probably fine. If it has kind of a soft coating, you'll want to make sure that that's some sort of a dark color. But really, you go with whatever you want to and how hard you play and how hard you hold the controller will will change a lot of that. If you really care about having a certain design on your controller, make sure you check out and see which companies can do that. Uh, most of the companies now offer very similar things. The thing I would say, the one thing that is, I think, scuffed because they have had so many issues um, they have kind of rolled back some of their aesthetics on their newer controllers to try and make sure that they just work over looks now. Um, so you might check that if you're looking at getting a scuff and just make sure that it's still going to look the way you want it to and you're going to be happy with it. If you've got an ugly controller, you're probably not going to want to play with it. So make sure that it turns out the way you want it to look. You're putting in $200, $250. Uh, get one that you're going to like. So just kind of wrapping up, those those few things are what you want to look for in a controller. Again, company integrity, build quality, features and aesthetics. A few other things that I would say, I am going to do a, a individual video over each of these controllers that I own and just kind of go a little more in depth of each one and what I like and don't like. So that'll be coming up soon. I'll have individual videos on that. The, the other thing is, uh, one of the things you might've been asking is why didn't I put price as one of the things you should look for? The, the reason for that is all of these cost about the same. They're all going to be $180 to almost $300, depending on the company. And what I would say to that is, if that's more than you're looking to spend on a controller, that is completely understandable. But if that's the case, then I would just quit looking for now or save up until that price isn't scary to you. Um, they're all about that same. So if you're going to be splitting hairs over maybe... 20 or 30 bucks between one brand or the other, uh, I would just wait until that's not so much of an issue. This is this is not something that everyone in the world is going to be able to afford uh, or that everyone really even needs. This is mostly for very competitive first person shooter uh, players. And so if you're going to if you're going to spend that much money on a controller, um, you want to make sure and so if you're going to use that much time, if you're going to spend that much time gaming and competing with a controller, you're going to want one that helps you more than it hurts you. And to do that at this moment in time is going to cost roughly two to three hundred dollars. So that's why I didn't really put price as one of the lists. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you did like the content, please subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, I'd really love to see the get see this channel growing again. We've kind of stagnated. I took some time off. Hopefully, we can get this thing back on the up and up. And uh, we'll see you guys out there in the in the gaming space, whether it's Twitch or TikTok or whatever. Um, leave a comment below if you on which controller you would like me to review first. I have Aim. Uh, we have the Cinch. And then we have the scuff. 
So whichever one you want to see, leave it in a comment below, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.